everyone. Welcome back to Tesh on Tap. This is episode four, and I'm here with Roger Abando, uh, Principal Solutions Architect, Startups at AWS, and uh, among other roles, former co-founder and CTO of Baker Technologies, which he exited in, in 2019. And uh, welcome, Roger. I'm, uh, I'm particularly uh, excited to talk today. Roger and I uh, were both uh, at Duke University together, um, and so we go way back, and, and we've taken some uh, some similar paths and some different paths throughout our entire careers. And so we have a lot of interesting things to uh, to talk about. So welcome, Roger. Thanks so much, Mitesh. Happy to be here. Happy to be able to contribute a little bit. Awesome. Well, and, you know, as this is Tesh on Tap, uh, you know, and, and it's the afternoon here. Uh, I'm in Austin. You're in L.A. Is that right? That's right. Um, so a little bit earlier for you, but uh, but I have my drink here and and I'm drinking, a, a, you know, earlier in one of the episodes, I drank a different pint house beer. This is a brand new one that just came out called Cosmic Nectar. I'm a, I'm a fan of IPAs. This is a juicy IPA and just picked this up. And besides the phenomenal bottle, I mean, the can rather, it's a, it's a really tasty, uh, tasty IPA. What about nice. yourself? I should have picked up a local brew, uh, but what I had is an Allagash White. Big fan of the, the, the wheat beers, the white ales. You know, I tried to do the IPA thing for a long time and it just, uh, it got to be too much for me, especially because the IPA started to get really macho and it mm-hmm. ended up being super happy. It was like a test. It was like, who can drink the PDS whiskey? So I just I like my lighter beers. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I go back and forth. I'll, I'm, I'm a big fan on the lighter side of the European lagers and pilsners. Um, and so that I'll try to, you know, keep some of those stocked to balance out the, uh, the kind of heavier IPAs and then and dabble into some of the, the whiskeys though. So I'm a, I'm a yeah. bigger Highlands and, uh, you know, Highlands single malt than I am the Isla kind of PD stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I've been on a journey with whiskey over the last 20 years. I started off with scotch and I moved into the bourbon range and then figured out rye was something I really enjoyed. And now it's just kind of like, I'm all over the place. I love Japanese whiskeys as well. So that's a, that's a whole other realm to explore. Well, hey, maybe maybe we'll have to do a a, a Tesh on the distillery later. I like it. Yeah. And, uh, and get to yeah. that. Tesh on tap after hours. After hours. There you go. <laughs> Within the highball glass. That's right. Um, awesome. Well, so, you know, the, the first topic I wanted to kind of jump into since, you know, we did go to school together and, you know, it, it was our around our paths from college into the tech industry and where we are today. And in particular, um, you know, we were really fortunate at the Zebra to announce this week that we raised a, a nice la- large round uh, and that put us into unicorn status, right? Which Congratulations, was- Congratulations, man, that's thank awesome. You. Thank you. And, and you know, uh, it's, it's definitely a, in some ways a little surreal, you know, even just thinking back a little over eight years of this being an aspiration, um, you know, but, but it was always so far out of reach. And then, you know, all, thinking about all the ups and downs and, and getting here, it's almost hard to fathom. But if I rewind even further back, to when we were in school, you know, in the in the mid to late nineties, um, you know, I I at the time personally, I li- I wanted to do something in tech, right? Like at you know, yep. phones weren't even out yet. Mo- you know, uh, smartphones, smartphones yeah. weren't even out. You know, the internet was just kind of starting to be a thing. Like dot coms were just there. Yep. Um, you know, like and so there was no way I I think back and fathom that you know here I am twenty two years later. Uh, the CTO and chief data officer at a, at a company that's worth over a billion dollars where I've been here since day one. Right. Yep. And so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious what, what you thought, you know, if you think back to college and, you know, the journey you've taken, like how much of it is similar, how much of it you just couldn't have predicted. Yeah. I mean, I think my, you know, my road's been a little different than yours. I mean, I get, everyone has a different road, but I do think back to that time in college quite a bit because, you know, if you look at, Duke University now, like I actually happen to be a student, uh, student founder mentor for mm-hmm. Duke University. So I talk to a lot of undergrad and grad students right now who are looking to get into it. And this sort of thing is just the norm, right? Like mm-hmm. I want to start a company. It's going to be in tech. I want, I'm already talking about cloud platforms. I'm talking about all these different things. You know, when you and I were in school, I don't know, like if you think back to what most people, first of all, the graduating, my graduating class is CS because I'm one year younger than you, right? Yeah. I think you graduated yeah, in 99. 99, you were 2000, right? Yeah. Um, and like my, my mate, the, the graduating class for my major in CS was 30 people, mm-hmm. right? That's, that's, that's a minuscule number compared to what it is these days. Oh, I, I went back from my 20 year reunion and they said that CS was the largest department 
in the like undergrad department in the entire university now. Yep. Yep. And like back then, if you were to talk to folks about, okay, well, what's your career path coming out of here at CS? It mm -hmm. would have been a, well, I want to work at Microsoft. I want to work at Sun Microsystems. Um, you know, there was a new company coming up called Google that, you know, people were kind of interested in and seeing what was going on there. Um, and so like, it was impossible to predict where the world was going to go. But for me, like I first learned how to modify a web page when I was in high school. I had a friend, his name was uh, Hero, and and Hero just figured out how to how to set up web pages, and he, he was teaching me how to do it. I just thought it was a lot of fun. And so when I got to college and, and I got into CS, I was like, you know, I really want to do this, but I want to focus on the web. I think the web's going to be a huge thing. But even the curriculum back then was like you had to take courses around operating systems, and you had to learn how to program in MIPS and all these other things. I actually worked with my advisor to be like, I don't necessarily want to do all those things because I know I want to work in web technologies. So like, how do I fit in a database course? How do I fit in, you know, mm -hmm. a t something on TCP IP? How do I learn these, these different technologies? And uh, fortunately they worked with me and I was able to put together a major, but like, you know, it was impossible to dictate where we would, to predict where we we're going to end up. I mean, we were just talking about how we both started in similar situations, right? You started a trilogy. Yep. Um, five and a half years, you said there. I was I was there for five and a half years. Yep. Yep. And I did Sapient, which was a, you know, at the time, I think pretty comparable size. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Services company uh, working, got a lot of great experience, you know, working with the, you know, the first generation of the web, you know, through and through the bubble bursting, mm -hmm. right? You came out a year before me. So you oh, got yeah. to see that even more closely. Like I literally graduated. I had a job offer and then like, half of the people who had job offers at the same time I did got their offers rescinded because of the fact that the bubble had burst. Mm -hmm. um, I just happened to have gotten staffed. I started really early in the summer and I got staffed on a project. And that's the only reason that I survived. That well, first I, round I know plenty of people, tons of people I worked with who, who were one year below me who were in that yep. exact same situation. And some of them changed com careers completely. Yep, absolutely. People just decided to go elsewhere. And I mean, I think I, I couldn't be happier about the way all that played out because I've loved, I've been so, you know, so fortunate in my career, like I've done so many things, right? Um, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I joke about going back and forth between services work and product ownership, right? So I did the Sapient thing and that was good for three and a half, four years. And then I went to a smaller services uh, house out here in Los Angeles. I had moved around a bunch for Sapient. And then I started my own consulting firm. I did that for the better part of a decade. And I got so tired of doing services that I moved back into product ownership. And that's kind of when I started to dabble with startups, right? What does it mean to own a product? Because I mean, you can probably speak to this as well. If you're doing services work, you never really get to own it, right? Yep. Like you come in, you're usually Johnny come lately. You, you generally you're not coming in with a blank canvas of like, right. let's get started from step one, which is like, ah, if you could do that every time, right? How glorious right. is that? But you never get to do that. And then you never get to see it all the way through because as a consultant, you're too expensive. Right. And so you never get to dot your I's and cross your T's. And so that always got really frustrating for me. And, and that's how I ended up doing the, the startup thing. Um, did a few of those. And then after, yeah, with Baker, Baker was my most successful exit. I didn't get to, you know, I didn't get to a billion dollar valuation, but over the course of four and a half years, we built a, you know, a, a company in the cannabis, the emerging cannabis space that was valued at 150 million. So that's, I still, you know, <laughs> not too bad. That's, that's phenomenal. And so I, I definitely want to dig into to Baker some more here in, in a second. And I want to get back to actually something you mentioned just around, uh, you know, the, the courses you took in college, right? Because I, I didn't, I took the, the, the operating systems courses. I was also a math major. I took some computational, I, I did graphics and computer graphics and did work in computational geometry and, and like all these hardcore CS classes mm -hmm. that I came out and, you know, the web was still like, or like I was still writing in C and C++, you know, when I was in school, uh, like my first year of Java was just out right like and we were just right. using, you know awt not even swing and some of the later java technologies that came up yep. and it only just started to come out to where you had web frameworks right and you know you you were going from servlets to then jsps and like all this stuff was just yep. coming out but you know I, I think back and i think back to kind of the the importance of timing in startups oh, right yeah. and and how much we have now and you even see you know at, at aws aws didn't exist Right. Oh, yeah. I, I was managing physically, ma you know, managing servers in a colo and yeah. what we had to solve and, and then what that has enabled in terms of the curriculum, but also the mindset of people graduating college now 
and what they can envision, right? Because the, the barrier to entry is so much lower.